Good morning, Olive, Arlo, and Frank. Grandpa coming to you in the living room in Jack's Beach. Today, I want to tell you about one of my favorite people in the world. And that is your, your Uncle Sam. Now, Arlo and Frank have both met Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam is their dad's half-brother. He is uh, de facto my, my oldest son. My son Frank was the oldest son that I uh, was a biological father of. But when I met Marsha, your grandmother, and I'm talking about Frank and Arlo, Olive, Sam is not a relative of yours at all. He's part of your Uncle Tom's family. Um, hopefully you'll get to meet him someday. He's a cool guy. But, uh, he was he was five years old when I met him, and he was a was a cool kid. That's that's just the only way you could put it. He was a mellow guy, he had a deep voice, which he still has. In fact, <clears throat> my son Sam. Has, has the same exact voice now that he had when he was five years old. So if you talk to him now, you're, you're talking to him back then. He had, had a, it's a McConnell thing, had a voice like this. And so when I first got together with his mom and, and Frankie was born, my son, Frankie, of course. And he was, I think he was still five. Maybe he was six by then. We moved in with my parents on York Street and he went to school across the street from, uh, from our house. We lived at 2176 East York Street and across the street was uh, the Hackett Elementary School, Horatio B. Hackett. It's where I went to school, although I had a walk there a few blocks. But we had moved when I was 13 years old. We moved from Dolphin Street to, to York Street. And and so we lived there. It was, a, it was a big house. I had a lot of help from my parents in in. in helping to raise um, both kids and Sam. So Sam was brought into the equation at that time, and, and my parents loved him. <laughs> they just thought he was the coolest kid in the world. He um, always had a unique perspective on things. He, my, my mom made a lot of soup. And I love soup. Your grandmother makes a lot of soup and she makes good soup, especially in the winter time. We're here at Jacksonville Beach now and and there's not a winter like they have up in, in Philly and New Jersey, but there, there's cold weather in the winter. It's, it's been cold the last couple of weeks here. Um, we're, we're coming on Christmas. It's, it's a little before Christmas. Arlo, you just had your birthday party yesterday. You got a clock from us, a cat clock. And you, you were very happy with that. And then at your party, everybody got to make a clock. So you had arts and crafts with a clock. And, and so you were, in, you're, in, you're a clock kid. <laughs> so you were in clock heaven. Well, and we're coming on, on Christmas and it's, and it's, chilly here 
And so your grandmother just made like four or five different soups and, and we'll have them, or they're in the freezer. We'll have them from time to time. It's, it's great. What now is called comfort food. She would also use leftovers and make soup. So depending on what the leftovers were, if it was, if it was, um, um, say, ham, so we, we had a ham on Sunday, then she would chop up the ham, cube it, and make split pea soup. If it was roast beef, then she would make what she called hash, but it was like a beef, beef soup. And, and so, but Sam didn't know what the meats were called or anything like that. So he would call it the green soup and the, the, um, uh, the, the beef soup, one of them was poop soup because it had this brown diarrhea kind of, diarrhea kind of, um, look to it. <laughs> poop soup. And, and the white soup was oyster, she used to make oyster stew with milk in it. And that was the white soup. So everything was, was a color. He, he went to Hackett School for a while. And when he got there, I said, uh, Sam, how was your first day of school? He said, oh, it was fun. And I said, did, did you meet any friends? And he said, I, I did. I have a new friend. His name's Eugene. Well, I, I knew who this Eugene was. I knew his parents. They were cool people. I, I used to hang with them for a little while, hang out with them. Um, I, I can't remember their names right now. Her name was, oh, her name was Mary Seal, her um, maiden name. I can see the guy's face. I can't remember his name. My parents knew her family. And, and that's how I met, met them. But anyway, and when I went to Hackett School, I went there with a kid named Eugene McKendrick. But, so I said to Sam, Eugene, oh, that's, that's ironic, because uh, I had a friend named Eugene when I went there, and Sam went, he must still go there. <laughs> Sorry, Sam, if you're watching this, you know all these stories, but these guys don't. So um, you'll have to bear with it to get to the end of this. Um, one time, Sam, Sam had been doing something and, and I accused him of hamming it up. So I, I took a piece of paper and I wrote in magic marker, Sam is a ham. And I put it at the top of the wall up in, in my bedroom, which at that point in time, I was with my wife, Marsha. Well, we weren't married then, she was my girlfriend, but. And said, Sam is a ham. And I left it there, and I didn't think anything about it. Well, and I don't know if it was the same day or another day or something, but Sam was all upset. He was crying. And my mom said, and my mom, I'm telling you, my, my mom and dad both, both loved him tenderly. He, um, um, he said, my dad thinks I'm a chicken. And, and she said, well, did he call you a chicken? And he said, he, he wrote it. He put it on the wall. <laughs> so my mom was like, he, she's thinking I wrote something on the wall. So she went up there and she saw this thing up there. And she couldn't reach it. I mean, the ceilings were very, very high. I put it up there with a ladder. 
And, and it said Sam is a ham. She <laughs> said it doesn't say Sam is a chicken. It says Sam is a ham. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so he um <clears throat> then we moved to I forget the, the address, but Tulip Street. Twenty I think 2300 block of Tulip Street, right off of Cumberland. Little hovel of a house. And uh, we had a nice garden in the backyard. We were starting to fix it up, but eventually, when I left, Marsha lived there, and I don't know whatever happened to the house, but we lived there, and Sam had a cat named Georgie. And this other neighborhood cat, it was it was sickly. And this other neighborhood cat just did Dr. Kevorkian on it, came in and killed it. It snuck upstairs in our house and killed the thing. And we you know, we heard it and, and like ran in, the cat cat ran out and the uh, and the kitten died. And we, it was a shame we watched it die. It, it, had cut its throat, and and so um, and Sam stood there and, and cried. We had a big ceremony and everything for the cat. And then things went south in my relationship with with his mom for whatever reason, and that really doesn't matter. And I took Frank and Tom, but I I couldn't take. I couldn't take Sam. Now, my, especially because of my parents, they tried to include Sam as much as they could, but he, he wasn't my natural child. The, the divorce didn't call for me to be able to even have visitation rights with him. So I, I had to deal with what I had to deal with. And he did pretty well for himself. His mother moved to this neighborhood that's called Bedrock. <clears throat> Maybe someday, Sam, you can go back to Bedrock and make a video, a video tour. And go there. You could do it, Anthony Bourdain, and, and go to Pizza Mania which is, I think that was the name of it, Pizza Mania or Pizza Maniac. I used to have a keychain with a little rubber pizza slice that had the name of Sam's employer on it. And, and Sam learned to make pizza. He, um, I worried about him, but I really didn't need to. But you don't know in real time, what you should worry about and what you don't need to worry about. So you worry. But Sam did all right. In fact, Sam is, has gone to a lot of places in his life. He loves to travel. He and Sharon travel quite often and they've traveled with their kids, Sammy and, and Terry. Um, they, they, Curry is my, my oldest grandchild, actually. And she came before any of you guys. She's a school teacher in New Jersey. Sam's been from, you know, places in the Caribbean and Mexico and a couple other places. He, he had a job interview over in Europe recently. And I don't, I don't know how that all came out. I, I guess he didn't take the job or something because I think he's still at the same place that he's been for a long time. He, he works at a box factory. He, um, but I always think of him as a guy that really has been to where he's been because he, he, he was everywhere from, from Bedrock to Stone Harbor. Stone Harbor is where my parents had a house. There were, there were rich people that lived there. And it was two blocks from the ocean, just like I am now. 
That's where I like to be. And there aren't so many rich people right here where I am, but close close to here, people that live on the beach have these multi-million dollar homes. And it was the same thing there. They just weren't multi-million dollar homes back then. They, they were cheaper, but we couldn't afford as much. So we seen both sides of the world. And, and while he was in bedrock, he learned a skill, the first of, it, of many skills, and that was making pizza. He um, met this girl. One time I came to drop something off to him. And I guess I, I went to the house in Bedrock. I forget what street it was on. It was around the corner from the Yellow Cab Company Depot where they had all their cabs near North Catholic High School. I think we were kind of right off Tarsdale Avenue. I should know the street because Frank, your dad got hit by a car right out there on the street. Wound up in the hospital for a few days with a broken leg. Um, but anyway, I digress. So, um, and then she probably said, well, he's around the corner at work. And he was about 15. So the reason I'm making this today is Sam turned 50 yesterday. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, wow, I've known Sam for 45 years. So when this is 10 years after I met him. So he was already working. He reminds me of me because I started working when I was around that same age. And I've worked just about continuously. I've been unemployed, but I've worked pretty much up until, until I retired in 2019. And I certainly keep myself busy now. Making these videos and stuff. It's kind of a full-time job. So I took whatever it was around there to, to Pizza Mania, and there was this pretty young girl standing on the corner, and probably with a couple friends. And you could tell she was the she was the brains of the operation, whoever was on the corner. And so I I said to her, uh, "Do you know Sam McConnell?" And she looked at me like discerningly. And who are you? <laughs> so I said, well, I'm his dad. Well, hold on a minute. And she went in Pizza Mania. Next thing you know, Sam came out. Well, that young lady turned out to be uh, the best thing that ever happened to Sam, which is his wife, Sharon. And um, she was my first daughter-in-law. And they've um, they've been they've been through a lot together. Sam still makes pizza. He still goes back to that route. In fact, Frank, when your when your dad passed away, if you recall at the memorial service, which was at Sam's house, there was pizza served. Well, you might not remember this, but. When we showed up there, it was like, okay, well, people are going to need to eat. So we're going to have to pull a Jesus and feed them with the fish and the loaves. Um, or we could do something. And Sam went, well, it's this many people. And I can do that for, and he gave a very exact figure, like $12.20 or something like $10.20. He said, I'll just make pizza. And I'm thinking, well, that's gonna, that's crazy. We make pizza. He didn't have to make pizza for all these people, but he had this, or he still does have a kick ass oven in the, in the backyard. A pizza oven, a wood fired oven. 
He makes all kinds of delicious stuff. If you want to get hungry, go on Facebook and look up your Uncle Sam. And he's always posting pictures of his food, which I'm guilty of, too. And I'm doing that stuff myself. So, um, he, um, took that zest for working and getting ahead. And he helped his mom a lot. Like his mom was struggling with some things. Like I say, it's, you know, it's not the, this is not the venue for, for any of that, but he helped her. He was, he was there and, you know, was the man of the family kind of. And a lot of times you say, well, that, that's horrible that that happens to happen to a, like a 15 year old kid, 16, with the years that he was doing this kind of stuff. But it made him a lot stronger and, and it gave him a, a zest for always being able to take care of those around him and to always try to get ahead. Sam's always thinking, like, what's my next move? What am I going to do to better myself? He um, was a handyman for a while. He put floors in for me, carpets or some floors, I think. He did something. <laughs> he did something for me in Cape May Courthouse. Him and Sammy. Sammy was a kid then. Sammy's grown and married. He um, is a junk man. If he's driving around, he'll see something on the side of the street and just go like, oh, I can get 20 bucks for that. And stop and pick it up. It's like, don't. You're putting trash in your in your truck what are you doing well i'll go over to such and so and and i'll sell this to him and he just always has been doing that kind of thing and and it served him well he's got a beautiful family a beautiful house um nice pool he lives in in woodbury in an area of Streets that are named after colleges. I forget what street he lives on. It might be Dartmouth. But every street is named after a college. And I made this video last night. And when I played it back, it had no sound. And it was 9.30 at night. There was no way I was going to be able to re-record it. So instead of using my laptop this morning, I'm using my, my phone. And hopefully this time, you'll get to hear me when I say, Sam, happy 50th birthday, buddy. You've been a blessing to me. Wish I was a better dad to you the whole time, but uh, you did pretty well despite not having me there as much as I should have been. Hey, dude, peace out, enjoy Aruba, and safe travels, man.